What influences a person to behave the way they do? Is it biological, environmental, possibly both? This topic has been negotiated by numerous psychologists, but there's no way to know for sure. It is my personal belief that everybody is born with certain biological traits, but how they are cared for and raised can alter those traits and change the person drastically. This seems to be the case for Jeannie, who is a feral child, which means she was under severe conditions of social isolation and stimulus deprivation for most of her life. Some people will call Jeannie a wild child due to her lack of social interaction and communication with other human beings. Jeannie was confined in a small bedroom and spent most of her time tied to a potty chair without any type of social interaction until she was discovered at age 13. When she was found, she was completely malnourished and had no grasp of communication or language. Seeing as she spent the most crucial years of her devel development in complete isolation, it is questionable whether or not Jeannie can improve and join society as a normal person, or if she can even improve at all. This girl has inspired so many questions to be brought up, and after bonding with Jeannie and performing tests and experiments, psychologists have acquired a lot of interesting findings. First off, it's easy to see that this is a case of nature versus nurture, where nurture completely overrules everything. Abuse was common in her household. Her father constantly threatened and beat his wife, and he had an extreme dislike for noise of any kind, causing Jeannie to endure complete silence. In fact, he would beat Jeannie too if she made any noise. When she was allowed to eat, they gave her baby food, cereals, and occasionally a soft-boiled egg. When she was found and taken to the hospital, she weighed only 59 pounds. Out of four kids, only Jeannie and one other sibling survived. Although Jeannie survived, she barely possessed any human characteristics. When they found her, she had no control over feces and urine, was incapable of standing straight up, and clearly had no communication skills or desire to socialize. In a case like this, it is difficult to know where to begin. A lot of people saw Jeannie as a lost cause or a hopeless case. Susan Curtis, however, disagreed. Curtis spent lots of time and energy on Jeannie's case and tried to figure the child out piece by piece. During the very first observations, it was determined that Jeannie could only understand a few single words in negative command intonation. She seemed to tune in on single words rather than a structured sentence, heavily depending on gestures and other non-linguistic movements to make sense of what others were saying. When Jeannie began learning her first language, she was 13 years and 7 months old. Seeing as Jeannie is a very unique case, test results were varied and difficult to interpret. Several doctors would compare her behavior to a 3-year-old, while others have said 5, 12, or 13. Since her development period missed quite a few important steps, it is expected that she would possess traits of children of all ages. Other psychologists have studied to see if Jeannie was born brain damaged or not. Tests have shown certain areas of her brain that are characteristic of mental retardation, but other psychological tests show otherwise, making it even more challenging for our questions to be answered. One study that I found really interesting was the comparison between a healthy developed brain and a brain like Jeannie's after her lifetime of isolation. The left part of the cerebral cortex in Jeannie's brain, which is responsible for speech and language, has not received the stimulation required for normal development. This lack of development has left her speech centers extremely damaged. In this picture, it is obvious that the normal healthy brain scan is on the left, and the dark patches on the scan to the right are areas that have shrunk due to the lack of stimulation. Over time, Jeannie began taking the individual words and stringing on subjects or feelings. Rather than just saying, dinner cookie, she began saying phrases like, after dinner, have cookie. When Curtis or any other doctor asked her questions, she interpreted them and could give an appropriate answer. Just like learning any language, it had to be picked apart little by little. She learned how to give objects possession and began saying things like, my house, my pennies, bears have sharp claw, and bathroom have big mirror. Later, she learned how to add negation to a sentence. Of course, they were still choppy and unstructured, but her ability and willingness to communicate is a step in the right direction. Although Jeannie developed slowly and used grammatically basic sentences, it is miraculous that she could learn to communicate with words so quickly, or even at all. The most crucial years of your development are from birth to three years old, and with Jeannie being 13, some would have predicted that she would never be able to learn a language. The only two words she seemed to recognize at first were her own name and sorry. Some believe that Jeannie's cognitive awareness helped her to gradually connect with other human beings over time. When Jeannie's case was no longer funded and she was sent into various foster homes, she regressed to a very bad state and went through a five-month period without saying a single word. 
Of course, this regression was due to her environment and her past traumatic experiences, but biologically she proved to us that she had a lot of potential and was capable of communicating and learning a language. Her intuition and awareness was there, allowing her to connect with other human beings. It is amazing how humans have evolved over time and how this little girl was able to revolutionize herself to have her story be heard.